All right, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. We'll try and make this as quick as possible before the air conditioner comes back on and interrupts us. Sit rep for the MG Midget that we're converting to electric. I, uh, I call around quite a bit and when I take a bit, maybe like five or so machine shops here in the Bay Area and inquired about somebody helping me make an adapter plate. My aim was to give them the, uh, the documentation, which is ample uh, for the, uh, the Siemens motor. Lots of very detailed measurements here that any decent uh, machinist would be able to, to deduce and, and, and work out right, like how to build an adapter or at least a, uh, a piece of aluminum that would made up against this surface here, right? And then uh, once that's built, then it was a slight custom job, which would involve uh, that moment as a YouTuber when you realize you've been talking to a camera that is no longer rolling. Where was I? That's right, the, uh, the adapter plate. At some point, you, after building the, the tight tolerance side, you'd kind of go with a loosey-goosey side and connect the transmission to the other side, make a couple marks, and drill some holes, and you're done. I, I don't think that the mounting on the on the on one side would have to be that critical. I think it's it's the centering of the shafts and having it be nice and stable and not wobble on you. After calling around and trying to source someone to help out uh, with it, mostly because there's a there's a sense of um, how much is your time worth kind of a thing, and and I, I always grapple with that. Uh, for in in some areas of my life, I'll spend months training and try to teach myself something just to you know effectively save a few bucks right and i do it but the, in, in in most of those cases i'm enjoying learning something new and i think it's a skill that i'll carry with me for the rest of my life so that therein lies the the extra value but in this case i wasn't particularly excited about drilling holes in a slab of aluminum just to make two things up i'm more interested in this project of getting that car back on the road uh finding a use for these Chevy Volt batteries that I've got lying around in the garage and wiring the thing up. I take pride in some of the things that I, that I wire up. Although in this case, fair warning, uh, we might go with like a more of a hot rod kind of thing. So there might, you might see some like loosey goosey wiring here and there to kind of like go along with that theme. All of that culminates to what any other, you know, home gamer, if you will, loves doing and that's buying more tools. And that's where we are today. So for the project, uh, I've had to buy a, a, a cheap drill press, which I didn't have in the garage here, and also a mini lathe. Uh, here's me drilling out the clutch mechanism, because uh, I for this project, again, to keep it simple, uh, I'm going to go clutchless, also because I've, I've got an AC motor. I think it'll work well. And uh, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to keep a clutch. None of them were, rose to the occasion where I'd want to do all of the uh, extra complexity that comes with keeping the clutch on an electric car. And the other electric cars that I've been driving recently, none of them had a clutch and they did just fine. So the thing I was after in dr drilling out the clutch is this piece here, uh, specifically the sprocket in the inside of the, or like the, the, the coupling piece that originally took the shaft out of the uh, transmission and transmitted it or moved it to a friction plate here to transmit the uh, the torques and horsepower from the gas motor into the transmission. So uh, now all I've got to do is take the the bought for the purpose uh, you know, and, and made for the Siemens motor. This thing is beautifully and perfectly machined for the electric motor I'm using, except it's mating on this side and then on the other side, my transmission doesn't have that same splined piece, so I've got to adapt it. They've got to you know, stick these things together. And so one, one way of doing this is to actually weld this up. And you could just slap this in here, um, maybe machine it so it lays flat, and then run a, uh, a bead of weld around here, and then d done. Bob's your uncle. Just get all the other measurements right and get the distance between the, the transmission shaft and the motor shaft the right way with the right amount of aluminum block in here. You're done. The only problem is, as I'm, I'm not a trained machinist, this isn't what I do as a day job. So, if I get this off, if I get the, uh, if it's, you know, maybe it's tilted up a little bit like this, or maybe uh, when you look at it in this orientation, I'm a little bit too far to the right, exaggerated here. Uh, but, I, you know, maybe I'm just a, a hair off to, to one side instead of being a, a, 
a hair to the left. And what that'll do is that'll end up we wobbling as I'm driving down the road and eventually tear up either the transmission side or the electric motor side. And in our case, it's an expensive electric motor. You don't want to be tearing up the bearings in that thing. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that I'm planning to combat this. Uh, and right now you're in the shop with me just having to think about this. Uh, this is you know, part of the fun, I think, is you know, sitting down and holding these and playing with them and taking measurements of the inner diameter and outer di diameter of things and getting it going, uh, hence the, uh, the libations. Uh, I, in this video, you might see me utilizing some of the, the machinery in the shop, like the drill press and the, the lathe. Uh, I assure you, uh, it was, those were done on a different day when I was not uh, inebriated. Uh, but for today, I think that the, uh, the, the beer will help. So yeah, that's that's the the weld method. No shame in that. Totally fine. Uh, and 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 I and I might still go that way. I don't know. I, it's just it it scares me a bit more than having um, you know some some insurance in other areas. So I I might three D print a piece that drops in here perfectly. And uh, this coupler is very well documented online. Um, so I have uh, exact measurements like for this. I can translate that into uh, a 3D software program. And these, I can just take, a, uh, this side, I can take just a bunch of measurements and, and do something uh, very similar. So I'd make the negative of these, drop it in, slide this onto that same 3D printed part. It would perfectly line it up dead center and then start tack welding this thing up and and, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, which reminds me, I also bought a welder. <laughs> uh, but that's for a future video. Uh, in this one, I wanna discuss some of the other options I have. Um, I, while I was waiting for this thing to come in the mail, I was looking for something I knew that the EV conversion community had been using, and that's the, the, the tried and true Lovejoy coupler. And they got this from the industry, uh, machining industry, because it's, it's just used all around. If you've got one shaft and it's a different diameter than the other shaft, or it's at a you know, slightly different angle, whatever, um, and you need to couple the two, this thing has been doing it for uh, work sites the world around. It's a proven piece of technology. And I would love to tell you that I've got this type of smooth sh shaft on the motor side, and then it's just a matter of coupling this to the transmission, but I don't. I've got to both uh, couple this side and this side to, you know, to the two. But what this affords you is a little bit of cushion. This thing here, uh, you can have it really solid like this polyurethane one, uh, or you can go with a Buna N. I had to, I learned that term from uh, Arduino versus Evil, and I had to actually Google it. I thought it was maybe some funky French word that he had, you know, come up with. Uh, not the case. It's an uh, industry um, term for the the type of rubber that this thing is made out of. So, Buna N. Uh, this one's so soft, like you can actually like flex it and stuff. But uh, what this gets you is a little bit of shock absorption. If one, you know, the input shaft just starts wrenching on it, there's a little bit of give before the output shaft starts to to catch up, and that can help uh, with the alignment of gears and teeth and that type of stuff. So that's really helpful. What this also gets you is some forgiveness in slight misalignments. If this is misaligned. I mean, this is, again, this is for exaggeration. I'm surely you wouldn't have it out this far. But as if these two shafts were misaligned at this angle, as they spun around, it would be constantly kind of like rocking inside of here, almost like a universal joint. And this, this particular uh, coupler will allow for some amount of that, not a ton, but some. And it's just enough where it might save my bacon when I go to put this thing all together and I've made some mistake, uh, some error in, you know, doing the proper prep work before I start welding things or bolting stuff to stuff. So that's the Lovejoy coupler and the, the thing that on the inside they call these spiders. So it it might look like I've got a bunch and that's because while I was waiting for that uh, part to come in the mail, I stumbled across uh, a eBay posting for a, a lot of these, as in like a chunk. And that's exactly what I got. I mean, couplers, more couplers, and lots more of the uh, the spiders in, in varying thicknesses, uh, or not thicknesses, but hardness, I should say. And I got all of these for the rock bottom stole it price of $25. I don't know which one I'll end up using, but having this many for 25 bucks is 
is the way to go, especially uh, when it'll be the first time I'll be turning some of these things on the lathe. If I screw one up, I can just go with the other one. Um, and the the other thing that's fun about these designs is like little Lego pieces, the this inner piece, the uh, the spider and the orientation of these three lobes uh, is identical on both sides. They're symmetric. So they mate to each other. But that also means that you can have uh, one of a, a particular size, in this case, uh, one and a quarter inches. And then if you, your other side can be one and three sevenths, right? Or if it's one and three sevenths stays the same because that's your input shaft and then you've changed some piece of equipment where now all of a sudden your output shaft is uh, smaller, you can come in and just drop in a smaller coupler of a love joy. You don't have to take this side off. You just take the offending piece out and drop in your new one. Done. Wonderful system. So th these are here just as yet another option for me uh, in case I need to go down that route. The third option I have, uh, which I've seen done twice online, there's a uh, there's another YouTuber, Don Walters, who's currently uh, converting an RX-7, and this other method is the one that he's using, which involves machining down this piece to accept to accept the inner hub of the uh, the clutch plate. So this, with springs included uh, for some dampening. Uh, is once you've drilled out all the holes, you would then just mark and tap holes here, uh, drill out the middle for clearance for the shaft, and then on the inner piece here, he's drilling out another hole uh, to accept the, a, uh, another, a, uh, a, I think a B lock is, might be what he's using, uh, where you, you make a, a hole here Put the uh, the bushing in, then you put your shaft or your motor in, and then you tighten down the bushing all the way around, and it wedges itself in there. Or he or he might be doing a friction fit by heating it up. I don't I don't remember which one, but uh, there's a couple ways to skin that cat uh, with this particular installation. So I also have that as an option, uh, which gets me to the lathe. Now, the lathe might be I might I was originally thinking I'd was gonna need it regardless because I'm taking measurements between the motor and the transmission. And this shaft, or this, this coupler, as it comes, is uh, too long. And so I might end up having to cut it down some. And I thought the best way would be just to, to cut it off with a lathe. Uh, and then I was also expecting to have to, to uh, drop one of these into these guys. Now I can I can just purchase one. I already I know the outer diameter of this. I could just purchase a Lovejoy that's the same diameter, uh, but I'm confident it would be more expensive than uh, the 25 bucks that I spent on all of these couplers. So my plan right now is just to take one of these, throw it into the the lathe if it'll allow it, and expand the uh, the inner diameter here until this thing slides right in, and then maybe you know whether it's pure friction fit with some heat uh, and a set screw or I then tack on you know maybe tack on some welds after that I don't know we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there so that's kind of where we are and I just want to give you guys another update on the the midget and let me know in the comments if this is uh, something that you've done before and you've had some experience and you're just cringing that I'm gonna machine down this big slab of aluminum <laughs> or even that I'm even thinking about it or that uh, I'm an idiot because I didn't realize that you know somebody sold this thingamawatchit and it's five bucks and I should have already bought it. Let me know. Share the knowledge. I will leave you with uh, Julian's first chips on the lathe. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out.